I went and tested all the possible upscalers available today to provide you with real-world, accurate information, rendered thousands of images, picked the best one, then passed them all to LDSR, different pixel space models such as Hat and FaceUp Sharp. I used all the possible latent upscaler, Ultimate SD, and even the so-called high-res fix, and that one was really despite my better judgment. So stick with me during this video because there's a huge catch and yours truly had to eat some serious, serious humble pie. Heck, I even bought a license of Topaz so you could get your answer. Which one is the ultimate upscaler at a massive 4x resolution boost? Let's go! For starters, we're going to need a basic workflow. I'm using my SDXL tutorial workflow. It's detailed in all my videos. I use the same one over and over again to make your life easier. It's well documented. It's newbie friendly. You should have no problem using it. And it's all controlled by bookmarks. So if I press one, I end up with my load checkpoint. Two, I have my prompt. Three, I have my reference image. That's the image we're going to upscale. And four, I have a little bit of magic we'll talk about later. Stay tuned for noise injection. We have all the possible upscalers you can think of, and all of them are controlled by switches. And then we have a preview so that when you click, you see the difference between the original image and the scaled image. I hope you can see it at 4K, I sure do. First, a little bit of very important background and theory. A lot of you have asked me for human faces in my tutorial, such as this one, or maybe that, or maybe this. And the problem being that when you place this prompt into your Config UI interface, you end up with that, or this. Well, you get the picture, it's, it's not pretty to say the least. So what's the problem? Are you doing something wrong? No. So how do they make those incredible pictures then? Is it all a lie? Is it impossible and they're using Photoshop? Well, so the less is said about that, the better. But the important thing that you must keep in mind is that garbage in equals garbage out. To pass this image through an upscaler is not going to make it look prettier. To the contrary, in fact, even if we use a standard smoothing algorithm that's built in our browser, we can see already what we can expect in terms of result around the eye, the face, the chain, and so on and so forth. Please keep this in mind because this is going to become very important in this video. Remember that something like high-res fix is always going to modify the image because you're passing a second case sampler to Confi, which then has to re-render the image based on the noise you gave it. And because the noise has changed, well, it's not the same image, is it? Okay, now that you understand the basics, Let's look at the notes. So we have the one, the only high res fix still recommended by YouTubers to this day for reasons that are completely beyond me, where you take a latent, you do a little bit of math, you multiply things by four, and yeah, you get that. Wow, okay. Yeah, no, that didn't work quite well, did it? Didn't we just talk about this? Didn't I just say it wouldn't work? It can't work, because when you upscale a latent, you're doing the same as scattering noise around, and we can't control that. And it doesn't matter, by the way, if I had done three steps, four steps, 10 steps. And if you don't believe me, maybe you'll believe the Confi UI developers themselves. First, they tell you that high res fix is simply a two pass text to image, which by definition will simply not work. So what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is to do what they call an iterative upscale in pixel space. You give it samples, you give it a V, an upscale model, wait a minute. Why do you pass an upscale model to something that's supposed to be in latent space? That makes no sense whatsoever, does it? Well, you should feel good about yourself for picking on that because even the developers say it won't work. I, I suppose terrible quality degradation wasn't enough. People still want it to exist. Anyway, they threw out a towel and they named it that, but it doesn't do what you think it does. So that's another one in the bin. And yes, I know people will say, but use deep shrink and this and that to correct. No, it's garbage, it's trash. I'm not going to waste your time like these other guys who recommend 399 notes from their friends just to obtain something like this. Instead, I'm glad I saved you a lot of time and we're gonna go straight to one that works. And that's the Ultimate SD Upscale node. You can find it in the Confi Manager. And the way it works is you specify an upscale, you specify the number of steps. So it is, it is a case sampler. So it has to match the values that you input it in the original image in order to function 
properly because you want to keep it consistent. It wants a scheduler, it wants a denoise, which you must set very low because evidently a denoise of one would be a completely different image. And it has an added feature, which is really cool. It takes the image and it breaks it into little squares like this, and then it resamples that instead. So that's clever, but it still wants an upscale model to do its job. So keep that in mind. There's some magic behind the scenes. So let's look at the output. I told you about this little comparison node and without using it, it's difficult to tell what's changed. And another thing you need to be very aware of is whenever you scroll down like this, you think you're zooming in, you're not. It's, it's some magic that the browser does for you that softens the image. You need to use a proper tool. Let me show you. This is Fast Tone Image Viewer 7.8. It's entirely free for non-commercial use. It allows you to take two images, hit P, and now you're presented with the histogram. The image is side by side for professional results on a color graded monitor. Now, the nice thing about Fast Tone is that it's extraordinarily fast as the name indicates. And what's beautiful about this is, as I told you in the previous video, this is a numbers game. I wasn't making this up because you probably guessed it. You're looking at my trash right now. Yes, even this one is in my bin because look at the headlights, they're busted. No one wants to drive a busted car. So let's look at our first image. We're going to hit the letter P and it's going to compare the reference image on the right and the upscaled image on the left. The reason I'm showing you this is to demonstrate that when you zoom in something, it should show pixels. And as you remember correctly, in, in Confi UI, it did not. This is a much more accurate way of gauging if a picture is correct or it isn't. It wouldn't be a good comparison video if we didn't have something to compare it to. So we're going to need a pixel model, in this case, 4X NMKD Super Scale. It's a really good model, by the way, which I use regularly for most subjects. And the good news for you is it's only one node, this, that's it. You take an image, it can be any image. You can even load an image and drag this over there and it will upscale it based on the model you specified in the box above over here. So which model should you choose? Because you probably don't have any models in that folder right now, do you? So you need to go on open model DB, which is going to allow you to find models that are relevant to the content that you're creating. And that could be AI generated content, for example. Does that sound familiar perhaps? Or maybe it's CGI, or maybe you really want those nice faces we saw earlier. So you're going to need something like Nomos, Face Up That, something like that. And the problem, of course, as you can see, is there's a lot of them. Because I'm a nice guy, I made the selection for you and I found that NMKD Super Scale, 4X Ultra Sharp, Real Earth Gun 2 and 4 were working the best, at least when using human subjects like this lady over here. So we're back inside Fast Tone Image Viewer because we've learned the hard way we couldn't make comparisons between images within Confi UI itself. We select the first picture with the second and we hit P. And now we have the two images side by side. Finally, I might add, we even get a little histogram, which is nice. So we can zoom all the way on the nose. Usually that's how this test is done. At least it is on Topaz. And we can see immediately that we have far more artifacts and pixelization on the model that we downloaded. And that sort of raises the question, did you download the correct one? And that's where the fun starts, right? You're gonna have to download all these models depending on your needs. But in this case, I guess I did download the correct one. And unfortunately, the results are in. And I must say, I'm eating humble pie here because I have made comments about LDSR being the ultimate upscaler, but I was quite surprised by the quality of the ultimate SD upscaler when used properly. We do see some problems, especially with the artifacts that start showing when we zoom all the way in. Here in the shoulder, I think the model is thinking this could be part of the forest, this could be part of the human. The tattoo is also a little bit mushed, but you know, on first glance, I would say this generation isn't too bad. I do have a problem, however, with the eyes, but this is not the fault of the upscaler. This is the fault of the generation, which is rendered at a resolution so small that there's really no way you can make a meaningful 4K upscale on this type of content and not mess up the eyes. Funny enough, the next episode is on Face Swapper. I think you can see where this is going. I'm trying to teach you how to use these tools properly. And I think the first thing to do is to stop thinking Confi UI, Confi UI, Confi UI all the time. You need to start opening your horizon and think maybe I can get this noise from another source. Maybe I can obtain a model with a mask from another place that's better at doing masks, that gives me more control, where I can use my control nets, where I can use 
my IP adapters, and so on and so forth. This is a technology that's going to be used a lot in VFX. It's a technology that is not going to be confined to one tool. You're part of a chain, if you will. Evidently, we're going to compare a lot more images, but I wanted to get back to Confit to show you LDSR. It's a model that's incredibly slow. And by slow, I mean seven minutes on a 4090. To put things in perspective, I can do generations using SDXL models at about 10 seconds max per image. And the output here, I have to say, is really impressive. Uh, that's why I've always been attached to it, but it does have artifacts. While the image does look a bit washed out and the artifacts were not here because of LDSR, but because of, again, the small size of the latents. So if you have the opportunity to do so, the first thing you need to do before anything else is to increase the size of your SDXL resolution, but that's completely dependent on your RAM. And in addition, I should say it's also in line with the limitations of the technology because even with Deep Shrink enabled, I was getting doubles on this image when I doubled the size of the latent. As you can see, that's that's not exactly the picture style I was going for. Although I have to say the water and the reflection is excellent. If you're wondering what model I'm using, it's Copax Timeless SDXL 10. And I have to say, I've been nothing but impressed by this model. Even with basic LoRa's, you know, the usual XT sliders and we'll have videos on that before you say anything. It's a model that has the rarity of working with a sampler called DMPP3M or DM++ 3M even. And the results are fantastic. I mean, obviously this is not trained on that. You're looking at an image in 4K of a latent that's half the size, that's already zoomed in, the face is distorted. Yes, I'm using Deep Shrink and Free UV2, but it's not enough to keep that image consistent. Although it gives you a glimpse of where this technology is going because it's much easier to pass this to an upscaler than it is to pass the tiny, tiny images we're passing it to that are full of pixels and really, really hard to upscale for any model. And by the way, you'll see in the workflow, I've left notes absolutely everywhere. So you'll be able to learn from my work. I've put notes about free UV2, the recommended setting, what creates artifacts and so on. And I also have a video on how to use those funky nodes. Maybe you've never seen them before, these context nodes. They're really not that hard to understand once you wrap your head around it. So now we have a new contender, it's LDSR, but we've only on one image, so that's not much of a comparison. But the results are pretty decent, especially if we compare it to paid tools. Remember, this is all free and you can change it and update it as many times as you want without having to pay for anything. I think this is pretty damn good for something that's free. The proof is in the proverbial pudding, as they say. So I chose this picture of an elderly gentleman, which allows us to also make a comparison with the promo that was posted on the website. Let's have a look at how these two compare. Okay, no problem. I think I did a better job than the original. Well, that's a good start. So now that we have an image that actually means something, let's compare the pixel model with something like LDSR side by side. First, the sniff test. And I think those two are pretty much on par with each other. They both retain the film grain, which is very nice. And the eyes are surprisingly well retained. And that's because of course, the model that I'm using has a notion of what a face is, where the nose should be, extra, extra. But they both, in my opinion, let us down on the eyebrow, especially LDSR, which looks drawn on. And this is an effect you're gonna see in a lot of products, including commercial ones. The bokeh, of course, is not to our advantage because it's the kind of effect that you see a lot in AI images, and I tend to get rid of it. Infinite focus is the way to go if you want realism, by the way. But overall, I would say this is a pretty damn good result. And that's because, again, garbage in, garbage out. And we had a very good generation. We got very lucky here. I think this one took me about 57 tries. But I'm very happy with the outcome. What do you think? Uh, put it in the comments. So let's compare now the LDSR with the Ultimate Upscale. There we go. And immediately we see a huge problem. Something is wrong. All the film grain is absolutely gone from the ultimate upscale. And while it does look really good on the moustache here, sadly, to me, that's a fail. That's an image I wouldn't use in production. So this round is for LDSR, unless I made a terrible mistake, which unfortunately I did. Can you guess what I've done wrong? 
I didn't use the right number of step on the second case sampler. Because I know you're going to end up using this one, I wanted to point out that when you use Ultimate SD Upscale, you're using a case sampler. So all the parameters, once again, must be identical. And if you think that's a high number of steps, yes, it is. But that's not uncommon for this model. And I think it gives it that extra bit of detail in the image, even when zoomed all the way in. I fixed it, and on the left-hand side, you can see the results of the Ultimate SD Upscaler. And on the right-hand side, you can see the results of the Pixel Space model, which, in my opinion, looks superior in terms of grain. The other one looks a bit washed out. But I have to say that the Ultimate SD Upscaler did a much better job on that moustache. And yeah, the eyes are pretty much comparable. Given that the Ultimate SD Upscaler is not that slow, uh, I would say this is a tie. Another cool thing you can do with this tool is you can select three images, hit the shortcut, and you can see all three images together so we can compare everything with everything. And I think here, while I am biased towards LDSR, I have to admit that it looks artificial. And in addition, seven minutes wait time of rendering for the output just isn't worth it. Another generation I was very happy with was again using Hello World Excel is this lady that's supposed to be some sort of uh, Greek statue. And I think the output is very subtle. The grain is excellent. Unfortunately, it looks like the Ultimate SD of Scale has taken out a lot of that grain here. We can see it very clearly. And there's another big problem with this image. Can you spot it? Yes, it's of course the background, which on the Ultimate SD of Scaler has been absolutely massacred by the tiling system that it uses. And it looks more like drapery than anything else. Again, it's re-rendered a second time. However, I have to say that the Pixel model did a really good job at keeping things consistent. And in my experience, it's true in absolutely every single test. The Pixel model does a much better job than anything that's tiled. And that's unfortunately a byproduct of tools that use tiled systems. As you can see, I've used the seam fix for this picture, but it didn't do enough. I tried it about 30 times and then I finally <laughs> gave up. I have to say the hair looks really nice, even if zoomed in all the way compared to all three others. So I would be tempted to say if I was to use this picture in production, I would cut out the main character and I would paste her back onto the pixel model. I think that would be the best output would be those two. Because you can see the face in the pixel model is just so grainy. It didn't really quite understand what I was going for with that image in terms of art style. Whereas the Ultimate SD of Scaler did an absolute brilliant job. I have to say this is almost perfect. But is there a better way than all these nodes and all these spaghetti noodles to upscale your images? Yes, there is. And of course, that's Topaz. Topaz is a commercial product. I'm not affiliated with them. I get nothing if you buy it, so it's up to you. But the bottom line is Topaz has a lot of advanced feature like subject detection, for example, which is it really good at. It allows you to create your own mask, so you don't need to switch between apps. You can crop your image. You can modify the colors of it without having to use post-processing nodes. And the output is just out there. Now this is a 4x zoom in. It's a little bit on the soft side, which we can fix by pushing a few sliders around. But sometimes, unfortunately, Topaz has a tendency to be a little bit too aggressive. However, if you're in a professional environment, you're not just doing this for fun at home, I would say Topaz is well worth the money given the advantages it has, the advanced masking features, and the multiple models it offers. Because it's not just one model, it's six different models, different tools associated with it, and the output is just mind-blowing. Okay, so I've made a little ranking for upscalers. Now, obviously, this is a little bit tongue-in-cheek. It doesn't mean the top one is the very best one. It just means that it depends on your use case. Another thing I wanted to point out is I'm fully aware that Magnify and Crea do exist, but these tools are completely reinventing the image. In fact, it's not just a byproduct of the tool, it's a feature for these tools. That's what makes them exciting. I'll have a workflow on how to reproduce these tools from scratch, and it will be kind of fun, but just keep in mind that photographers and professionals in general do not like those tools because of the changes they include. The first one we're looking at is LDSR, and I have to say, even though it was initially one of my favorite, the issue here is that it's so slow that it's just not usable as part of an iterative exploration process. It was particularly frustrating for me to take a latent, which I thought was almost perfect, only to realize I had overlooked a very small mistake with it, which was amplified 
side. Remember, we talked about this garbage in, garbage out in the upscaler. It doesn't work well on human subjects as well, especially with things like hair and eyes. I find that the quality is really so-so. Uh, and therefore, for what it does, I don't think it's worth the seven minutes. I just don't think it is. Next is the Ultimate SD Upscale. I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised in this test. It's faster than LDSR. It works well on Bokeh Image. But the problem with this styling system, which resamples the image, doesn't understand what the image is. It doesn't know it's a wall. It doesn't know it's a subject. It has no subject recognition whatsoever, as far as I could tell, in fact. So it can't understand geometry in the background, which means anything architectural, anything that's complex in terms of line that needs to stay parallel, it just won't work. Yes, you could mess with the settings. I get that for days on end and, you know, the seam fix and the width of the mask and the... Ah, uh, no. Please, no. You're going to spend more time trying to fix that image than using the next one we're looking at, which is, of course, using a simple node, right? The most obvious one, upscale using model. It comes built in with Confi. It's simple. It's free. You get the image you put in, right? That's it. That's what you get. And it works with everything. Humans, architecture, animals. It works. I tested it on tons of stuff. It works with everything. But it's true that downloading models is a pain because they're not very well reviewed. There's not really any ratings that you can read anywhere where it's word of mouth. Models are released on almost a daily basis at this point. And the problem is that they're also not updated necessarily regularly. So you might be using something for a couple of months only to realize it's been overtaken by something else. So you have to read the news or watch my videos maybe to keep up with that. And let's be honest, that's a bit of a pain. Not watching my video because that's great, but you know what I mean. Next is Topaz, and I have to say it does everything the others do, but it just does it way better. Subject recognition, uh, you can edit the image, you can now also, there's new features in there where you can change the colors, you can mess with the brightness, it's all AI powered. So yes, it's AI, it works great. It does cost an arm and a leg. That said, of course, if you're a studio, if you're a professional, $400 is an afterthought, and is it worth it? Oh yes, yes it is. I would go with that if you're a professional. Next, I've bundled high-res fix and iterative upscale node together because, quite frankly, there is zero reason to use either of those. Arguably, I suppose you could say the iterative upscale node is useful if you have very little VRAM and you really want to use that model to upscale your image. But in reality, you're much better off going from point A to point B without going through 17 upscales. And as for high-res fix, quite frankly, maybe it was popular seven months ago because people were just messing with the beta features of this product and they were excited about upscaling latents, but it doesn't work. It just doesn't do what you think it does. So finally, the manual latent upscale, meaning you're doing what high res fix does, but you just do it over and over again. So you mix the worst of both worlds. Uh, no, absolutely no reason to use this straight trash. Moving on. During this test, I also did numerous shots of crowds and vehicles because this is something you requested. And I found that even if it wasn't for the busted structure of the vehicle, the creepy faces on top of the windshield were just too much for me. It just doesn't work for production. In addition to this, we have people with very creepy faces. This is meme worthy. And the problem were compounded as I added more and more people into the picture. Maybe it's good enough for the bodies, but when it comes to faces, Absolutely not. Is there a solution for this creepy face problem that we're facing here? Yes, there is. The first one is to use specific LoRa's that are designed and trained on crowds and they worked okay when I tested them. And in addition, you can also use face detailers once it's a single person, like a portrait here, as well as face swaps when the person is maybe a little bit further than that, but a little bit closer than this. And that's something for the next video. It should be in the middle of your screen right now. If not, YouTube thinks you will love this video. So definitely go check it out because we know YouTube is always right. If you have a different experience with upscalers, feel free to leave a comment. I'll definitely check those out. I'm also on Discord and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.